water was running off, whoosh, about half of that mud washed out there in 20 minutes. So it looks like it took 30,000 years to get the mud out there. It took about 20 minutes. And then 4,400 years since then, okay? A friend of mine from Louisiana is a pastor of a church. He said, Brother Hovind, I used to work in the oil field drilling in the, Missis in the, Gulf, of Mississippi, in the Gulf of Mexico, drilling for oil. He said, we drilled down through 14,000 feet of mud and hit trees 60 feet tall, standing up. 60 foot vertical trees under 14,000 feet of mud. Hmm. More about that on video six. Here's a picture of the oldest tree on the planet. It's called the bristlecone pine. We've got a piece of bristlecone in our museum in Pensacola. It's only 30 inches in diameter and it's 700 years old. You can count the rings with a magnifying glass. It grows real slow. Now, tree ring dating is not an exact science. Trees can produce two rings a year or three rings a year. Okay? And be very careful about tree ring dating with overlapping sequencing. We cover more on that during Q&A time if you'd like. But the oldest tree in the world, this textbook says, is 4,300 years old. Earth's oldest organism. That's a pretty old tree. But I've got a question. If the Earth is millions of years old, why don't we have an older tree someplace? Why would the oldest tree be 4,300 years old? I have a theory about that. Now, here's my theory. I believe about 6,000 years ago, God made everything, and 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. And so I predict the oldest tree ought to be somewhere around 4,300 years old. It is. Wow. Maybe that Bible's right, you know? Maybe you ought to read that thing and believe it. Here's a picture of a coral reef. You know, the largest reef in the world's in Australia. I had a call from a church in Brisbane one time. They said, do you want to come preach over here in Australia? I said, I need to pray about this. He said, yes. I took my whole family over to Australia. My daughter and I got to go scuba diving at the Great Barrier Reef. It was incredible. Some of the reef was destroyed during World War II by ships and anchors and bombs and stuff like that. So the environmentalist wackos went out there to see how fast it grows back. They watched the reef grow for 20 years. It was a government project. <laughs> After watching it go for 20 years, they said the reef is less than 4,200 years old. Okay, well then I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why don't we have a bigger reef someplace? Why on earth would the biggest reef be only 4,200 years old? I have a theory about that. I bet you know what it is, don't you? Can you figure it out by now? Okay. Here's a picture of Niagara Falls. The textbook says, boys and girls, the rocky ledge above Niagara Falls has been eroding for nearly 9,900 years. Now, how do they know that? Well, the rocks are breaking off the edge. I mean, all waterfalls do that. They break rocks off, and the waterfall eats its way backwards, okay? Flows one direction, erodes the other direction. Niagara Falls is moving back 4.7 feet a year. Charles Lyell went there in 1841 and said, well, Niagara Falls is here. Obviously, it started up here at the cliff by Lewiston, New York. It's moving back down the gully. He said it's 10,000 years old worth of erosion. The people that lived there said, Charlie, it erodes a whole lot faster than you think. One good rainstorm, and there's a whole lot of erosion takes place. He figured three feet a year, purposely to make the Bible look wrong. He hated the Bible. We get into more of him on video number four. Today, Niagara Falls is way back there, split over that island. There's actually two Niagara Falls, the Canadian side and the American side. It's eroded back quite a ways just since Charles Lyell's time. The textbook says this gorge that the river runs into, it runs in, is seven and a half miles long. A simple calculation shows it's been 9,900 years. Oh, it's not that simple. See, Niagara Falls is right here. It started off further north up by Lewiston. If the earth is millions of years old, why hasn't it eroded back to Lake Erie by now? Why is Niagara Falls right there? I have a theory about that. Okay, now here's my theory. You see, about 6,000 years ago, God made everything, and 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. As the flood water was running off, whoosh, about half of that creek washed out in 20 minutes. So it looks like it took 9,900 years. They forgot the flood. They also forgot to get the right number. It should have been 8,400 had they used 4.7. But, you know, what do you expect? Okay. When it rains, 30% of the water runs into the ocean, bringing with it mineral salts. The oceans are getting saltier every day. Today, they're 3.6% salt. 
They could have done that in less than 5,000 years. Question, why aren't the oceans saltier? Well, you see, 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there's a flood. Now, since the flood's been over, the oceans have gradually gotten saltier. One atheist I debated said, Hoven, would you please tell me how the freshwater fish survived the flood? I said, sir, aren't you assuming the flood was salt water? He said, the ocean is salt water. I said, well, it is today, yeah. During the flood, it's probably mostly fresh water. And it's gradually gotten saltier, and today some animals have had to adapt to salt water. And now we have freshwater crocodiles and saltwater crocodiles, and they probably had a common ancestor, a crocodile. He said, that's evolution. I said, no, it's not. Going from a freshwater croc to a saltwater croc is a minor change compared to your evolution story. You believe they changed from a rock to a croc. Now, that's a major change, okay? A friend of mine in Alabama raises fish. He said he took a freshwater fish, black mollies, slowly added salt to their aquarium. In two weeks, they became saltwater fish. When he put them back in freshwater, they died in 30 minutes. They can adapt to salt water, not a problem. How many have ever gone into a cave and the guide said, don't touch the formations, they take millions of years to form? They all got the same speech, right? You go over here to, uh, what's the one in Kentucky, uh, Mammoth Cave? Or go to Carlsbad Caverns, and they say it took 250 million years. They did a study on these stalactites, and one guy said, you know, the fastest they can grow is two and a half inches per thousand years. That's the maximum growth rate. I don't think so. Here are some 50-inch stalactites growing under the Lincoln Memorial. They did that in 40 years. There's a bat covered up with flowstone before it could even rot. There's two-inch stalactites growing off refrigeration shed in Pensacola, Florida. There's a guy in a building in Indiana built just 40 years ago, has huge cave formations in the basement of the building from water leaking through the limestone. There's a mine was shut down in Australia for 55 years. When they opened it back up to check it out, there were huge cave formations in 55 years. There's a pipe that was dripping water for seven years, made a 13-inch stalactite. I thought it was two and a half inches per thousand years. It's more like two inches per year. They broke off the stalagmite that was under it and gave it to me. It's in my museum. There's a parking garage built 1997 in Texas. It was making stalagmites on the students' cars parking under it. They had to put up a drip pan to catch the water. A guy in Wyoming had a hot mineral spring on his property in Thermopolis, Wyoming. So he stuck a pipe in the ground. The water came out the top of the pipe and bubbled out the side of the top of the pipe, you know. But it had a little fountain. They called it the TP fountain. Well, the guy died. They left the pipe sticking in the yard. As the pipe was there, it, it left behind mineral deposits as the water evaporated. How many have seen these mineral deposits? You get them on your sink up here? Okay. The guy died, and uh, about uh, 95 years after, he died, after the pipe was stuck in the ground, I went to see it. Here it is, back in 1998. That would take some lime away to scrub that thing clean, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit. The guy down the street started his later. It's not quite as big, you know, but... Uh, you know, at the current rate of erosion, the continents will erode flat in 14 million years. Why do they tell us we've got fossils that are 300 times older than that, still above sea level? They should have washed out to sea 300 times. All you got to do is fly out west and look at the erosion patterns and say, man, this place was destroyed by a flood. I mean, the whole world was destroyed by a flood. Just fly around like I do and look out the window once in a while. Uh, the oldest languages in the world are kind of interesting. Origin of major writing systems from National Geographic. What do they say? Well, they say the oldest writing systems in the world started about 3,000 B.C. 5,000 years ago. Oldest writing systems. Hmm. And the oldest languages are modern, sophisticated, and complete. The Chinese said the year 2000 was the year 4,700. They think they started their calendar with the flood. They called Noah Fuhai. The oldest recorded capital punishment, 3,800 years ago. The Hebrew calendar said the year 2000 was 5760. We know the Hebrew calendar is messed up because the rabbi purposely took some years out to make it not match the prophecy to fit Jesus. The Saxons had a genealogy going back to Adam. The Danes and Norwegians had a king list going back to Noah. 
Don't trust the Egyptian king, lest that is greatly exaggerated. See the work by Corville on that and Evolution Cruncher. Why are the oldest reliable historical records less than 6,000 years old? Well, I have a theory about that. I bet you know what it is, don't you? Yeah. That Bible is absolutely right, folks. Absolutely correct, scientifically. The evidence for a young earth is overwhelming. The students aren't taught that. Students are only shown the evidence for an old earth. Remember the coins in the 